Working on replacing the original speedometer bezel, cluster bezel with this new fancy new chrome one. Got that from mid-50. Always wanted this as a kid because you know, I've had this truck since I was 10 and I always wanted a chrome bezel so I'm finally going to get one. Um, the trick is figuring out how to install it. Um, I've not done that before so I'm starting with taking the gauges out. I got a couple of them out. I'll get the rest out here shortly. And then I'll, it looks like this goes in and has these little tabs, as you can see there. Maybe if I can focus, yeah, little tabs that go in there and bend over. But I've got to get into it to do that because they're not accessible. So I'm taking these, bending these tabs up. And what I've done to start this, I've already got them kind of started, is I took a real fine point. Um... You know, it doesn't have to be turned uh, 90 it's a straight one but I couldn't find my straight one so I just took it and got it under there just enough to work the tab up because that's just sheet metal and then I've come in with some little bigger screwdrivers to pry those up because I don't want to work those any more than I have to because the more you bend them back and forth they'll just break off I'm sure if it's being this sheet metal so I'm not sure if I need to take these off right now or if it's this piece around here I need to work um, because it kind of looks like that might be actually what I need to do. Because these might hold this black piece in, which, uh, I don't know. I need to repaint these needles, too. I've got some enamel model car paint. Um, I think the original looks like it's orange. So I've got a couple different oranges here. And I got a, oh, sorry, a couple different oranges. And I got a red one, but I, I think I'd rather do them orange if that's what was original. So... Actually, I might go to bend in these first before I finish these to get the whole cluster split after I get the gauges out and then uh, go from there. Like I said, I've not done this before, but I don't I don't think it's going to be too difficult. I guess we'll see. I've got an extra cluster if I screwed up too bad, but I don't think that's going to happen. Okay, so I got it apart, and how I did that was I just pried on these two bottom cramps. I've left the top ones well I kind of started on this one then I got to thinking what if I just do the bottom and that's so that's what I did and I just use these little pair of channel locks that seemed to get the best bite on the tab just pinching it and then bending it over like that so I should just be able to bend those back over to get that back in there so the back side of this okay so that so that crimps to that I'm still not okay. I'm gonna have to take this piece out next, which is these tabs. And I think there was some, yeah, there's a couple on each side there. And then that must expose the tabs to hold the front bezel on. So, so I think that'll be fine. And then I'll get in here. Yeah. I assume this is similar to the last one that I've done. I did, I did the one for my 65 Cornet, and I learned never to touch the white on the black. It just, it's like powdery and just starts smearing. So I'm not even going to mess with that. I might take the blow nozzle, some light air, and just blow this off a little bit. Um, and then as far as the needle goes, I'll just get a piece of paper, or actually plastic probably, and just slide it behind the needle so I can paint on the face of it without getting the back, you know, t have to touch the back with any uh, tape or anything like that. We don't want to do that. So unless there's a better spot for me to line this up when I paint it, um, but I'll do something like that. Like I said, I'll, I'll separate the two, probably with just a little piece of plastic. That way the plastic won't smear the, the speedometer there. Um, and then I'll clean the back and the, the glass and stuff that's in there too. Clean that up inside and out real good. Um, these gauges are all going. For the most part, uh, I got, I'll have to dig it back out, but I'm pretty sure I'm using it. I bought a new temperature gauge, I think. I'll have to look. I put a couple gauges, new gauges in this, and I'll just black the other ones out. Or just put the, you know, these back in there that are never illuminated anyway. Um... Yeah, so we'll make some more progress here, and then I'll update you. Okay, got the speedometer, that part out. Uh, again, it's these tabs here. Um, bent, had to bend these. 
And I just, I was able to do all of that, all the top ones with just this guy, just kind of got them on there and just lightly pried. This is super duper thin. So just lightly pried up with that tool, got them all straightened up and then just pushed in on the tabs to pop it loose. Um, so we'll put that in a safe spot there. And then on the back of this guy, so that was facing, those numbers are facing that way. So again, it was, so that was flipped around in here. Anyway, so here's the glass. We've got a seal. It shrunk, so hopefully I can still reuse that guy. I'm going to be super duper careful. Um, so I'll get pop the glass out now. I don't think anything is holding it in. And then these tabs here are those tabs there. So I'll flip it around. So those these ones here expose, and then there's a line of them all the way across. You can kind of see that all the way across there. This should be underneath this glass. Oh, probably right there. Anyway, so. Take the glass out, get that popped off, um, and then I'll start cleaning everything before I put that on or start reassembling everything, just kind of get it all cleaned up so we don't get dirt stuck in between anything as we start reassembling. So the glass did come right out, but I just want to note real fast, I was putting my fingers through here and just kind of pushing out on it and it popped the seal and it kind of came out. And now I notice there's a little tab right there so the guy doesn't want to shove in from the top. Um, because that could break your glass with that clamping point right there. So if you take it out from the top, note that that's there. And that's the only one that I see. Um, so the glass kind of slides up underneath that lip and then just is held against this uh, with the clamping force of that. So um, just be aware of that. So something else to show you. So I've got all these tabs straightened to pop out. But these tabs here that run along the top don't go through anything. Um, they just go under and then come back around and clamp so Just be aware Those are going to kind of be weird to bend I think because these you obviously just they come through and you just push them over But if these you keep I don't know if I'll just be able to push them over without tweaking The front of that bezel, but maybe I'll have to be careful not to scratch the chrome of course I might have to get put a little black tape on my whatever I decide to use to bend those with, pliers or a screwdriver or something. So um, I'm gonna see if I can get under. This metal's actually pretty um, pretty sturdy. It uh, I had to get a screwdriver under these and prime up my little pointy tool. I felt I was gonna bust it off, so I um, got them going just a little bit with the screwdriver. And it's funny, I've got quite an assortment of pliers here. Um, one won't grab with the beans and then you'll get another one it per it'll grab it just right and peel it back up So if you got some different, you know, like needle noses, these ones didn't bite very good The channel locks didn't want to grab it um, But uh, these ones here just had just the right angle to, to pry them straight up So you might have assortment of pliers if, if not, I mean you'll, you'll get it figured out I'm sure but uh, I'm just trying to be as careful with all the tabs as just, I've had bad luck busting those off in the past um, if you're not real slow and easy with them So on these I was able to just push or, or bend these a little bit these two lower ones and Then all these and I just popped these out pushed them all through and with those popped and these loosened um, These just drop out so you don't have to bend all those tabs If you don't want to it looks like so at least on mine, so I'll get it cleaned up and I'll see about putting that guy in there. So far this chrome bezel is a really nice, just perfect fit. Again, I got this from mid 50s. Yeah, mid 50, there's the info of that guy. Um, so what I'm doing here is as I'm bending these tabs over, I've got um, the little foam stuff here that came with this to keep it from getting scratched. And what I'm doing is I'm taking that and I'm pushing down on it to make when I bend these tabs so it's a good tight if everything's compressed together as I bend those tabs in so you know I'm just pushing pushing down on that with my and with my other hand bending these with a, a point of a screwdriver and this one here went a little harder I used a screwdriver or I, th I think pliers on that one so um, that might just Make it a little easier to assemble. I had to kind of bend these tabs down a little bit just to get. It's just, like I said, it's a super tight fit, which is good. 
um, but I kind of had to tweak it a little bit to get it to fit in there. Um, it was almost too tight, which, like I said, that's, it's, it's, this is a well-made piece. I'm impressed. So I'm finding using a punch and a little hammer is easier to bend these little tabs over. Um, gives you a little more force and, um, anyway, that's, maybe that's the right way to do it. But, so this one here was kind of tricky. It wasn't wanting to get real tight. So I put a block of wood to space that away from so it was kind of more flat. And then I pushed down on this part here with the sh with my screwdriver. Um, and then so I kind of pushed my chest against that. You'd almost need another hand. And then I was able to pinpoint enough pressure on that to get this to fit down better. And then I was able to hammer that tab on. So that, that one, again, nice tight fit, um, a little tricky but I got it. I don't think I scratched anything up here too bad or at all rather. Um, so now I just got these other tabs to bend and that part is ready to go to the next step. Here's how I'm painting that needle. So I've just laid a Ziploc bag behind it, taped it so it doesn't move around too much and then laid some of that on there with just a little model paintbrush. I've got a, the other couple this this one says fluorescent orange and this one is which is this is the one I just used brilliant orange so I'm gonna pull out a couple of those new gauges I bought and see which one uh, matches it it doesn't have to be perfect but at least within reasonably reasonably close so we'll wait for this to dry and then I'll do some comparisons got the painting all done so here's one of the new gauges that I bought just for 12 volt battery. And uh, I think the match is pretty good. This is a little brighter, but uh, that's close enough to suit me. Uh, I was gonna try the fluorescent orange that I have, but for some reason it's almost turned to like a salmon. Uh, so I don't know what's with that. But anyway, so what I ended up using was this Tester's Brilliant Orange, Orange Brilliant. The number is 921536, I think. I don't know, maybe that's a 636. Anyway, that's that orange. Matches reasonably well with this orange. I said this is more vibrant, but um, that's okay. So we'll keep on putting it back together. Got it all put back together, and it's just come out, came out wonderfully. I think, uh, just beautiful. This is, I think, I've mentioned it before, but this is uh, one of the my favorite parts of a '56 is the dash cluster. I love the big sweeping uh, speedometer. It just, it's real pretty when you get them chrome, and then it really makes the Art Deco kind of design pop on these. So, I've changed. Uh, I've put an oil pressure gauge in it, so I've got the center to go with that. This light won't be used. The battery light won't be used and then this is a, a new volt gauge so that's how i'm going to run this i've got a separate uh, fuel s gauge that'll just go in a, in the dash or in a, in a pot or whatever those little brackets um, because i'm going to use uh first starting out a fuel gauge that's compatible with the mustang sender and then the temperature gauge again will be i've got an aftermarket gauge for that as well so those those aren't going to be needed right now uh, one thing I didn't realize when I was ordering the gauges is they only go either on the right or the left. Like I couldn't take this oil pressure gauge and put it over here because the way that they've done, you can see that they're opposite depending on which side the gauge goes on. So luckily it worked out um, with the gauges that I bought. I didn't buy four new gauges to find out that I can't put them all where I needed to put them. But um, just FYI, if you go to replace gauges, um, make sure that you've got a spot um, for the type of gauge that you're the side the side that you're buying so I didn't realize that and again it doesn't isn't mattering in this case but um, anyway I'm very happy with this the needle looks great in there they all look like they go together um, so we'll move on to the next step